What's up everybody, Evan here for Grips.com, continuing with Project Get Me Stacking. Um, as you may or may not have noticed, I am no longer over there. I'm now over here, and the light, the famous light fixture, has switched places. You guys are probably going to ask, why did you do that? Well, I was recording the last video about environment, talking about the importance of natural light, and I realized that I had my desk facing a wall when I had a beautiful window with a view of the city just across the room. So things clicked, took my advice, slid across. Anyway, today we're going to be doing a question that relates to my live players out there. Anyone who's currently playing live or thinking about transitioning live poker, I think this video is really going to help you out. I'm going to get straight to the question. Hey Evan, my husband and I just started watching your videos and love all the work you have done. He has been teaching me how to play poker for over the past two years and I have been consistently getting better. Final tabling, a few online tourneys, doing all right. He has also done really well with consistent winnings online and even going out second in some big local tournament a while ago. Good stuff. I would like to know more about presence at the poker table when playing in-person tournaments. This applies for cash games as well. My husband and I are both nice people who chat with those around us, but I am working on focusing my attention to gameplay and any tells from other players. Any advice on how to balance all the distractions in person between the poor sports who go on tilt, the chatty ones who do not shut up, and those crazy old men who complain they can't see the cards. I know exactly who you're talking about. I know headphones and listening to music can help but are there other ways to clear out all the craziness and just play good poker? I love to be able to hone in and focus more efficiently, but it's tough with so much distraction. Thanks for all you do. We really appreciate your videos and ability to help us get better at this great game, Liz. And Liz, yes, there are definitely many ways out there to practice and just focusing and playing good poker and cutting out all this bullshit and I have a couple ways that I'm going to talk to you about doing that and also you're going to get a little more than you bargained for because I just I just saw this question I was like live presence and I've just played a bunch of live poker recently well one tournament but I won it and I was like yes I want to talk about this so I got a lot to talk about on this subject I'm, I'm burning my clock already so let's go to the presentation So, playing good strategic poker is just half the battle. Maybe not even half. What happens on the felt is often an extension of what's going on off the felt, above the rail, in the person-to-person -person interaction that is poker. Knowing how to handle yourself at the table and how to get the most information from your opponents while giving away the least about yourself can give you a very, very big edge. But sometimes, trying to pick up too much and get every edge and all this information can be overwhelming and lead to decreased performance because your brain is just like, dude, there is way too much going on right now. I just want to take care of one thing. So, there are two schools of thought when it comes to your approach when playing live poker and how you should carry yourself how you should set up your table presence. The first is what I would recommend for new players or anyone who is more math-based, theory-based, focused on strategy and not too interested in the human element of the game. So Liz, this is probably the approach that you would want to take. This is the approach made popular by Phil Hellmuth Jr., known as Conceal don't reveal. With this approach, you basically put up your shield and don't allow your opponents to pick up any information by looking at you because there's nothing to see. You know, think picture Phil Helmuth on the TV with his sunglasses and his, his big leather jacket and his hat and his hands covering his mouth. Like, there's really not much to look at. This strategy is very effective for people who don't really enjoy social situations, 
feel pressure and discomfort when people stare them down, or in this case, people who just aren't ready for that element of the game yet and just want to focus on the task of playing good poker. With this approach, you get to be in your own little bubble, and it's hard for people to penetrate it. So, first things first, if you want to implement this approach, shield up. Wear clothing that will cover as much of your body as possible. Block off tell-heavy areas like the eyes with sunglasses, the neck with a scarf, and anywhere there is a strong pulse. You know, think your wrists, maybe even your hands. Um, can't really cover your, your chest, but to protect your breathing, maybe you wear a big coat so it's hard to, to see the rising and falling of your chest. Next step is to block out the distractions since you probably aren't someone who is going to be focusing on tells. Music is a popular choice among many players, but some, myself in particular, also find that this, you know, quote unquote, takes them out of the game by putting them a little too far into their own world. An approach I tried this summer at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas was the use of earplugs. This blocked out all minor sound, like that, that cricketing sound of chips shuffling and um, the music in the back and, and also a lot of the chit chat and you know the, the rumbling sounds from a lot of like small conversations going on around it it just blocked all that out however I was still able to hear conversations I was directly engaged in because these earplugs don't block out everything you know they block out you know 70 percent I found this to be a really happy medium that didn't take me out of the game completely and into my own world but filtered out most of that noise that just really isn't important. The defensive approach is all about eliminating as much unnecessary distraction as possible and increasing your comfort level so that you can play the good solid poker that you're comfortable with. In many games, this is enough to get the job done and for many players, this is the best approach to take in there when you're getting into the field because it's scary out there. It's tough out there. People are trying to throw you off your game. And the easiest way to prevent them from doing so is just block them out, shut them down, give them nothing to work with. But to be a truly elite player, you'll want to learn to capitalize on the additional information that's out there. So now, Let's talk about the aggressive or offensive approach. This is the approach that players like Daniel Negreanu and Esfandiari use to perfection. This approach is all about getting as much information about your opponent as possible, um, knowing how they look when they're relaxed and comfortable versus when they're stressed, pressured, or just uneasy in general. To gauge these things, these states about your opponents you you have to engage them in conversation in games in anything that will show you what they look like when they're feeling different states so to be able to gauge them you have to engage them this approach will allow you to gather more information about your opponents which will help you in clutch situations where your opponent may be running the big bluff or going for an overbet with the stone cold nuts because you'll be able to gauge if they're at ease or feeling pressure. But it does come with some risks. Since you are actively engaging your opponents, you too are going through different states. You're giving off information about yourself with your tone of voice, the way you move your hands, so many different things that they would probably require a whole video series to go over. Yeah. So, if you are interested in taking this approach, it's important that you're aware of what you're projecting to your opponents and also who's looking for these things. Here's a little game you can, you can do when you get to the casino, keep things more exciting, even when you're not playing, when you're on the waiting list, looking at the 20 tables out there, whatever. Try to identify who is using a conservative approach and who is using an aggressive approach when it comes to the game above the rail. It'll help a lot when deciding who to try to engage and who's not worth your time, and of course, 
who you have to be cautious around. And remember, just because someone has the shield up doesn't mean it's not possible to engage them. You just need to take a different approach. When taking this approach, the offensive strategy, there is another question. Who do you want to be at the poker table? How do you want others to perceive you? Playing different roles can give you different advantages as well. Against some players, it makes sense to be their best friend, acting in a jovial, happy-go-lucky mood. And against others, it pays to, well, be a jerk, talking trash, challenging them regularly, getting them out of their comfort zone and off keel a little bit. On tilt. So, if you want to be an actor, who do you want to be and why? Well, in brief, if you are someone's friend, they're more likely to give you credit, believe that you have a big hand when you represent it, and be less likely to try to play pots with you when it's a close spot. For example, it will be much easier to get away with light three bets preflop if you're someone's good friend. Can you think about any other situations where it's beneficial to be someone's friend? Post them in the comments. If you are an enemy, your opponent will probably go out of their way to play pots with you, call you down more often to try to catch you bluffing, and make an effort to put the moves on you. If you have a good feel for your opponent and are comfortable making big calls, playing the role of the villain can get a lot of extra action and net you a lot of extra profits. Can you think of some good times when it makes sense to be the enemy? Keep in mind that playing these roles, well, it takes a lot of skill. The more, you, the more practice you have at it, the better you'll be. Um, so, you know, the more time you spend around people, the, the better you're going to be at it. But by no means is it required for you to be a winner. You can play any role you want, and if you know how to act out that personality well enough. Um, but at the end of the day, the easiest person to be will always be yourself. And that goes for off the poker table too. So if you want to be at ease, if you want to feel comfortable, if you want to just focus on cards and playing good poker, then just be yourself. Whether that's yourself with the shield up or the shield down, not too important. When you feel comfortable is when you'll make the best decisions. For most people watching this channel, approach number one is going to be perfectly fine. And your sound strategy and play with the chips will be what makes you the money. I just wanted to introduce these other ideas for those viewers who are more interested in the psychological aspect of poker, who want to get more edges wherever they can. And that is my four cents on table presence, tells, the approaches you can take, and how to win the game above the rail. Um, I think most people will start with approach number one and maybe eventually work their way number two. And some players, I believe, just stay with number one because they've got so much going on in their brain and they, they can pick up so much information from other people without having to engage them that they see no need to risk betraying any, any information about themselves. But as I said quite a few times, do whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. Experiment with different things. Play in a lower stakes game where you're gonna feel really comfortable and try out different methods and see what works for you. Because at the end of the day, whichever style suits your personality best is gonna be the one that's the most profitable for you. So, uh, that's all I gotta say about that. If you have any questions for me uh, that you would like answered, please send them on over to evan at grips.com with the subject line, get me stacking. Hopefully, I can answer your question and help you get stacking. If you're enjoying these kind of videos, if you're learning something and you haven't yet, please click that red button below the channel and subscribe just to show your support. Put a smile on my face every time I see that little subscriber number go up. So help me out. And help yourselves out too. Post your comments, post your thoughts uh, below 
in the video comments section, whatever, get some discussion going, sharing ideas stimulates creative thought and discussion and you're going to get some cool replies and some good back and forth stuff and it's really going to get the juices flowing. We'll all experience benefit from reading them, but the people who are actually engaged in that discussion are going to experience the most benefit from it. So do yourself a favor and get active in that comment section and that's going to do it for me for real. This has been Evan for Grips.com. Hope you learned a thing or two and take what you learned, go out there and get stacking.